So have you ever been looking at a poster like this infographic or maybe the insert that comes with um, medicine that you've gotten and you see diagrams like these and wondered what they actually meant? Well, today you're going to find out. Um, we're going to learn about how to draw and interpret skeletal structures, which is what those drawings are called. Skeletal structures are shorthand Lewis structures that are used mostly for drawing organic molecules. And remember that organic means chemicals that contain carbon and actually, technically, carbon and hydrogen. So let's also remember that carbon has four valence electrons, which means that are single, which means it can make four bonds. Hydrogen has one single electron, uh, which means it can make uh, one bond. So to reiterate, carbon can make four bonds, hydrogen can make one. So if we have a molecule like methane, CH4, it's going to look like this. Carbon connected to four hydrogens. So what I'd like you to do now is to draw the Lewis structure for ethane. Pause and draw it. Okay, so to draw it, you would need to have two carbons connected to three hydrogens each. And that's where you get the formula C2H6. All right. Try propane. Pause it and try that one. OK. Propane has three carbons and eight hydrogens. Okay, now I want you to stop and take notice about what is different between the outside and the inside carbons with this molecule. And what do you notice? If you pay close attention, you'll see that the end carbons have three hydrogens and the inside carbons have two. All right. Next, try ethylene, C2H4. So we have two carbons and we have four hydrogens. Now if we've got four hydrogens, that means we can only have like two on each carbon. And so that means we need to have a double bond between the two carbons because the carbon needs to, each carbon needs to have eight electrons or four bonds around it. All right, so let's put all this into practice. Pause the video and draw this carbon chain and add the number of hydrogens you think are appropriate on each carbon. Okay, let's see if you got it. So this is a single bonded carbon, which means it needs, on the end, which means it needs three carbons. Same way with this one on this side. That gives the carbon four bonds and each hydrogen one. Now, these two central carbons have three bonds already, so that means they can only take one more hydrogen. Pause and take a look at that and make sure you understand it. So the big lesson here is that multiple bonds between carbons reduce the number of hydrogens that can bond to them. 
Now let's think about what triple bonded carbons would look like. This is acetylene, C2H2, so two fewer hydrogens than we had before. And because of this, the carbons need a triple bond between them. But there's more to these organic molecules. They often have more elements than just carbon and hydrogen. Um, oxygen and nitrogen are two common ones. Remember that oxygen makes two bonds. So that means usually you'll see oxygen either double bonded with two pairs or single bonded twice with two pairs. Pause and take a look at these two. Nitrogen makes three bonds with a single lone pair on it. Um, and so if you see it in multiple bonds, it actually usually is in a triple bond. So occasionally you can see it in a double bond, but that's not as common. All right. So now we have, you may have noticed that we haven't actually gotten to skeletal structures yet. Let's just learn what they're actually all about. So skeletal structures are a way to abbreviate the carbons and hydrogens in a molecule because oftentimes these organic molecules are big and complicated and you want to make them simpler to look at. So here's hexane. The hex implies, as you may see, that there are six carbons in this molecule. Here's another way to draw it, however. This drawing actually reflects more about the actual shape of the molecule. Um, the carbons actually aren't in a straight line. They actually, the, the bonds between them actually have a bit of an angle to them. So if we were just to trace over the carbons, I'm going to do that now, we would get a line that looks like this. And that is actually how you do skeletal structures. This is what the skeletal structure of hexane would look like. It doesn't look nearly as complicated as what we just saw, but the point is that in these drawings, you draw simple lines to represent the carbon-hydrogen chain and the ends of each line are carbons and the corners in the zigzag are carbons and you're expected to know where the hydrogens are so this squiggly line is the same as this structure alrighty now if you have an element that's not carbon in the molecule you include the letter or the symbol of that element uh, in the skeletal structure. You also include hydrogen if that hydrogen is connected to the non-carbon element. So let's turn hexane into hexanol by adding an oxygen and hydrogen to the end of it. And so that structure would look like this. It's pretty similar. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons, and then this we extend the line here to include the oxygen and the hydrogen. We don't need to put a line between the oxygen and hydrogen. We don't need to put the lone pairs on oxygen. That's all understood. All right. Are we ready to jump in the deep end? So what I'd like you to try now is to take a skeletal structure and work backwards to create a Lewis structure. Uh, pause the video, see if you can draw this structure uh, as a Lewis structure, unsimplify it. All right, so here's what the Lewis structure of theobromine would look like. Theobromine, by the way, is one of my favorite molecules because it's the active ingredient in chocolate. So let's deconstruct what's going on here. Here we see N and H together. That means that there's a single bond connecting the hydrogen to the nitrogen. All right. 
we see a double bonded O here connected to a corner. That means that there's a carbon in that corner. We also add the lone pairs back to the oxygen if we're doing a full Lewis structure. Uh, over here on this nitrogen, we just see a line going out into space. Well, remember, wherever you see a line, the end of the line is a carbon. So that means we have nitrogen connected to carbon. And we're expected to know that since it's a single bond, that there would be three hydrogens around it. This carbon that already has three bonds, one single and one double connected to it, would only get one hydrogen. Nitrogen only gets three bonds, so since it's got three connected to it, it doesn't get a hydrogen, it just gets a lone pair. Um, and yeah, I think that covers all the different kinds of bases. Oh, this carbon here is in the middle of four bonds, one, two, three, four, so it doesn't get any hydrogen the same as the one that it's connected to. So this is how you would deconstruct a skeletal structure. All right, um, I am going to supply you with some practice work to uh, do these. I hope that you'll find it interesting, and I hope that this was helpful.